Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Hemingway Jones and this is our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and just about anything that has to do with self-expression. I am very glad to have you here with me today. I'm coming to you from my library, where else, where I'd like to talk to you about something that's always a lot of fun, always a little bit difficult. And that is coming up with my top five favorite fountain pens. So without much further ado, let's just jump right into it. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me today. It's always a pleasure getting together. There's so few of us here. It makes it much more intimate, a lot more fun. I get to hear from more of you. I get to answer just about every comment and have some really great conversations. So thank you for joining me. And I hope this one is as fun as the others. So coming up with a top five favorite list of anything is always a challenge. It's always a lot of fun. You can pick certain criterion and rank them, which one you think is the best, which one writes the best, which one is the most reliable, which ones are more expensive, which ones are more beautiful, which ones have better nibs. You can go on and on. You could do it very scientifically. And I must tell you, I didn't do any of that. This is purely my top five favorite pens and I'd say some of these drop out from time to time, they return again, there's different ones that go in and that's what makes it fun. So I think this is a topic we will revisit from time to time. So let's put a very fine point on this. This is not to say that these are the best pens in my collection, they are simply my favorites right now. The ones I'm using regularly, the ones that I sort of miss when they're not in rotation and I keep going back to, and they're just my favorite pens. So let's start with number five. So my fifth most favorite pen is a pen that I think punches way above its weight as all Twisby pens do. This one has one of my favorite nibs. It's one I use to journal regularly and I just love most everything about it. And that is this Twisby VAC 700R in Iris. It is an amazing pen with a really fun fill mechanism. I love the VAC fill. Although if you saw my review a few months back, I do think that the Pilot 823 VAC fill is superior to the Twisby's. Nevertheless, the Twisby still has an excellent fill that works great. The pen itself is very comfortable to hold, although I should mention that it does bulge out as all VAC fill pens do to allow the plunger to go down and to create the air vacuum inside of it. So it has that bit of a flare, so it has a little bit of a belly to it. And uh, that may affect how you hold this pen. So the iris color of this pen is nothing short of enchanting and beguiling. It looks like some kind of a magical sea creature with rainbow iridescence. It's quite a lot of pen visually, but that's what makes it fun. It's certainly not a business pen. It would be kind of fun to bring it to a business meeting, but it wouldn't fit in as well as some of the other pens on this list. Nevertheless, when you're home journaling, it's very inspirational to see this multicolor, beautiful, smooth writing pen in your hand. It's got a cursive smooth italic nib 
custom ordered from Pen Realm, where you can order any pen with one of their custom grinds. This is my second from them. They do a fantastic job. And this one is also smooth, reliable, extraordinary. I found that with a cursive nib, if you give yourself over to it and you allow a certain rhythm and flow to happen with your handwriting, you'll get that much more maximum line variation from the shape of the nib. It is a pure joy and this pen has earned its spot in my top five list. Okay, it's time for number four. Our number four pen is a pen that was sent to me by Kaveco last summer to do content over on my TikTok. And I instantly fell in love with it. I took it on a trip to the beach and had it down by the salt water and I took photos of it on rowboats with the ocean behind it and it fit in perfectly because it's made out of nautical style brass. What other pen could I possibly be speaking of? This is the 19th century inspired steampunk looking brass Kaveco Sport. This is a wonderful pen made out of brass. It's well made, well fitted. It's a cold pen when you first pick it up because it's made out of metal, but since it is metal, it warms up quickly in your hand. It feels amazing. The oils of your hand tarnish the pen to all sorts of beautiful variations and degrees. Part of the fun of this pen is using it and getting it tarnished. Another great thing about this Kaveco Brass Sport is that it's nearly indestructible. You could take this and throw it as far as you can. It would probably stick up from the grass or bounce off rocks and you would just pick it up and keep on writing. It is a fantastic pen. I did find a converter for it. It's quite short, but it fits it well and it works well and it makes it easy to use other inks. I generally match it with metallic inks that sort of fit its vibe, copper burst, things like that. It's a lot of fun. Antique copper is a good color as well. So it is a fantastic writing pen. And another thing that I really love about it is that Kavecos are super easy to change nibs. You simply unscrew them and screw a new nib in. I currently have Kaveco's 1.1 calligraphy nib on this pen and it is outstanding. It's one of my favorite journaling pens. It's probably my most favorite traveling pen, and it's a pen I will have for the rest of my life. Our number three spot today is another pen that writes as if it costs much more than what it cost. And of course, I'm speaking about the Twisby Eco in smoke and rose gold. It is an extraordinarily beautiful pen. In a way, it sort of defeats the idea of economy by the fact that it costs around 50 bucks just for some nice colors. Nevertheless, those colors are awfully nice and it's a fantastic pen to write with. This one has a stub nib. It's one of my best stub nibs. I have J. Urban's Caribe de Chypre in there, which is a beautiful shimmering gold ink in a brown base. It suits it perfectly. It is a fantastic writer. It's great for journaling. It's great to fill. It's fantastic to clean because Twisbees are easy to strip down and clean entirely. So you don't have to worry so much about which ink you put in there. It's not going to get clogged. And if it does, it's easy to clean. So this is a fantastic pen. It's worth every dollar that it costs. And I use it at least once a week. So now we're at the number two spot. This is where it's really tough for me. For one thing, I am now straying into fanboy territory in a place I never really want to be. Nevertheless, I need to be honest with you guys, and I think those of you that follow me on TikTok know what my two favorite pens are. So it won't be a surprise for the rest of you. 
this is how I feel and why I feel this way. So my top two pens, the second one is the Mont Blanc Egyptomania. And I'll have to tell you, this came awfully close to the number one spot. The one thing that held it back is that you cannot post this pen. Not posting a pen is usually a deal killer for me, where I won't even purchase a pen. But I was so intrigued by this pen. For one thing, I love Egypt. I love ancient Egypt. I love modern Egypt. I love the idea of Egypt. So anything with a hieroglyph on it and a sacred scarab on the nib is going to attract my attention. When I read that they manufactured it in a style as they did a hundred years ago with their pens, I was intrigued to see if it was any way true. I do have a couple of vintage Mont Blanc, none that are a hundred years old, but I do have one from the 1950s, and it is a soft, flexible nib, as this pen has, and I can assure you, they really knocked it out of the park. This is an extraordinarily beautiful pen. It is a beautiful pen to write with. It is soft, it is smooth, it is reliable. It sets down a consistent, beautiful, variated line of ink every time you uncap it. It is just one of my favorite pens, one of my favorite journaling pens, and each time I use it, I just feel like I'm some sort of Egyptologist or academic that's about to delve into some incredible mystery. It is a fantastic, beguiling pen. Well, we've done it. We've reached our number one spot. So right now, what is my most favorite, most used pen? It's a pen I've had for 10 years. It was a gift from my wife. It's a pen that I've had with me during incredible occasions in my life. I've taken it to Venice. I had it on me when I got married. I had it when we signed our house purchase, everything else. It is a very special pen and it's very special to me. And of course, I'm speaking of, and yes, I'm in fanboy territory now, the Mont Blanc 149. This pen is much hyped and in some corners much loathed. I remember before I started writing with Mont Blanc pens, I was really into Waterman and a lot of people said, well, those pens aren't very good. They're not worth the money, everything else. Then it was a gift. I started to use it. I really love the piston fill mechanism. I love the elegance of the pen, the size of the pen, the way their proprietary resin felt in my hand. But more than anything, it's that gorgeous two-tone oversized gold nib. And watching it gracefully draw incredible lines with incredible variation just based on the way your hand moves and the most minute changes in the slightest bit of weight and pressure. It's just so fun and so interesting. When I look at my writing in my journals after the fact, you can always tell the stubs and the calligraphy nibs and they always look really great. But the one nib that I'll look at and go, wow, that looks really vintage. It looks really interesting, quite a bit like my grandmother's writing or someone from the past. Which pen did that? And often I write in the margins, which pen I'm writing with and which ink, because I'll go back and I'll ask myself. And nine times out of 10, it's the Mont Blanc 149. It is just that good, that reliable, that fun to write with, and that beautiful. And then throw everything on top of it with all the historical associations, all the romance that goes with this pen. It is truly an extraordinary pen. So now that we're at the end, I'll say I do feel a little bit bad that some pens didn't make my final list. The biggest glaring one is my Lamy Safari with the calligraphy nib. I have it in Mango. It's an extraordinary pen. It writes amazing. I use it all the time, but it just didn't crack the top five. So do you do this? Do you rank your own pen collection? Do you have your own personal favorites, maybe two, three, maybe five? 
let me know in the comments. I'd be very curious to hear what you guys think of my top five. Am I all wet? You know the pens I own. Is there a pen that I own that I should have ranked higher? I would love to hear from you. Well, thank you very much for reaching the end. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, feed the algorithm gods by liking this video, commenting, and if you would, please share it with someone else who you think would enjoy this kind of content. And if you didn't enjoy this video, I'm amazed you're still here. So thank you for staying this long. Maybe one day I'll win you over. But my friends, thanks again for joining me. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again in a week. And until then, take care of yourselves and I'll see you further up the road.